So hi, welcome to a nice podcast with Brandon from The Drowned God. We're going to ask him some questions today. I'm going to start. Uh, so what inspired the creation of the band, and what does the band name mean? So we started the band in 2014. Um, it started out with just myself and our vocalist, uh, Cody Golo. And um, when we started, we kind of wanted to take this more hypnotic, dark and ethereal take on metal and post-hardcore. So I was super inspired by projects like Meshuggah's Catch 33, um, the hypnoticism in that record, and really wanted to apply that into a different framework. Um, so we released an EP called The Ebony Void, mm. and that came out in 2014. Oh. And it was a three song EP and it was me doing uh, all of the instrumentation and Cody doing vocals. Mm -hmm. um, followed that up with a record called Moonbearer. Mm -hmm. um, at that point, we had fleshed out the band and had gotten a drummer and a bassist and another guitarist. So we became a five piece. Um, and we had that lineup for um, another record. So we released mm -hmm. our next record called I'll Always Be the Same. Uh, that had the same lineup. And then I ended up uh, switching over to bass and playing guitar as well for our new record, which is called Pale Home. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I kind of took over both. And uh, for our next record after Pale Home, we have a, a new guitarist. <laughs> Oh my God. So a lot of lineup <laughs> changes. Yeah. Um, That's fine. Yeah. So um, some lineup changes, um, they're still the core of the band. Mm -hmm. um, and in terms of the um, band name, I, I got the name from a book series called Game of Thrones and it's a show. Yeah. I didn't really want the band to be based on anything from Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. I, I had a bunch of names in my in a list on my phone of potential project names when we were conceiving of the project. Mm -hmm. And um, to me, the Drown God just captured a, a feeling of weight and mystery and intensity mm -hmm. and this kind of ethereal beauty. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the idea of being submerged in water um, and the idea of like water being this thing that can cleanse, but it can also uh, you can drown in it. You can be submerged. You can be immersed. Mm -hmm. And that's really the weight that we wanted to capture the band. Mm -hmm. um, so no relation to Game of Thrones, really. Other than yeah. The <laughs> for the title. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's a pretty sick uh, name. I just want to put that out there. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, so congratulations on your upcoming release, as you mentioned, Pale Home. How do you feel about the response to the announcement so far? I think it's super exciting. Um, mm -hmm. We have been working on this record for years. We, um, I, I tend to have most of our record written by the time uh, the previous one comes out. So mm -hmm. this one has been in the works since I'll Always Be The Same was released. Um, it's We put a lot of uh, time and effort and thought into uh, getting this out there and producing this. And like we are ex super excited to have everyone hear the finished product. Mm -hmm. That's Definitely. awesome. Uh, so I want you to pick your favorite lyric from this album and tell us the meaning behind it. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Um, hmm. um, I think one of, this is really a, a question for Cody, our vocalist, but I think one of my favorite lyrics on the entire record is at the end of the song I Met You. Mm -hmm. um, so that was our first single and it was I Met You Within Grief. Mm -hmm. um, to me, this whole record is a reflection of our collective experience throughout 2020. You know, yeah. we've poured, like, we, ex we recorded this record um, during a lockdown yeah. in 2020 and during the pandemic and there's all this unrest and like we had so many uh feelings you know as everyone did mm -hmm. and yeah 
and translate that into this record. And I think um, the feelings of grief and uncertainty and chaos that we've all been feeling, uh, to me, really is expressed through the music. Yeah. All right. Oh, that's amazing. Um, so can you tell me if there's any meaning behind the cover art and name, Pale Home? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, so our album art was created by one of my favorite artists named Ken Pektamir, Ooh, he is okay. a Turkish artist uh, who also did our album art for the album Moonbearer. Mm -hmm. And to me, like, I would, I would have his album art on everything I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> yeah. love, I love his art. It's, as soon as I first saw it, it like instantly gripped me and I uh, reached out for album art because he's, he's brilliant. Mm -hmm. And he, um, his, his artwork conveys a sense of mystery and uh, darkness in a way that is so compelling to me and also it's so open to interpretation. Like I've heard so many interpretations of just the album art on Pale Whom. You know, I've heard people say it's a woman uh, with her head uh, leaning back with a dress. I've heard some people say it looks like uh, the, ner the nervous system of a human person. And yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a lot of different things. Yeah. Except That's for really interpretation. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so can you tell me a little bit about your writing process for this album? Definitely. Um, so the writing process for this album was pretty similar to the, our previous albums. Um, so I'm the main songwriter for the band. Okay. Writing bass. And typically I'll come to the band with uh, the structure of an entire song uh, all written out. Mm -hmm. um, and then we will practice together and uh, each band member will add in their own uh, ideas into the, the framework of the song that was already created. Yeah. Sometimes like I will uh, use their feedback to kind of build off their ideas. And I think we have a really symbiotic, like productive, healthy relationship within the band. Like we're all best friends. Mm -hmm. uh, really, um, it's always amazing to me to hear the finished product because I keep all of the recordings. So anytime I'm writing on guitar, I record yeah. like on my phone, you know? So I have this record of the original idea mm -hmm. on the guitar that I had written. And then I hear the final product on Pale Home or any record that we've done. And it's just completely, uh, you can hear the, the, the kernel of like the original idea, but it's completely <laughs> expanded. Yeah. And so I think each member definitely brings their own layer to the record mm -hmm. with this album i think it was just a bit different because stylistically we really wanted to try something different so mm -hmm. we ended up going to a different producer we went to uh seth manchester at machines with magnets who has recorded some of my favorite bands like daughters and lightning bolt and liturgy and like mets you know there's so mm -hmm. many bands yeah um, Definitely one of my favorite producers and really like pushed this record to a whole different level. It made, he made it so much more gritty and textured, you know? Mm -hmm. Me like getting to work with Seth Manchester really influenced the uh, style that I had, I was going for with this record. Mm -hmm. Like knew that I was going to be recording with him. I definitely tweaked the songs and um, wrote for his production in a way. Mm -hmm. and, um, also uh, with this record, I ended up taking over bass and guitar. Mm -hmm. So um, I ended up rewriting a lot of the bass parts. And, okay. Uh, so I think like that kind of imprint from Seth and also from the change in lineup definitely um, changed the sound a lot. Because we went from a five piece to a four piece. Mm -hmm. Definitely the style changed a bit yeah. for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Wow, this it sounds amazing just like how much I guess just you got to work with your favorite producer and you got to have your favorite artist to like make the cover art. It's just it's a perfect storm. I love that. It's brilliant. I love it. It's like this is my favorite thing to do in my entire life. This mm -hmm. is like a passion and I hope it never ends. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm so happy for you. <laughs> um so can you tell me where your headspace was while creating this album? 
Absolutely. So um, definitely was writing this pre-pandemic and uh, during the pandemic as well. So we recorded this album in June, but it was originally supposed to be recorded in May. We had to push back because of the pandemic. We weren't, there's yeah. so much uncertainty during that time. Yeah. And to me, like, uh, my headspace was like a feeling of uncertainty, a feeling of um, maybe a little of dread, you know, like mm -hmm. not really knowing where the world was headed, you know, and yeah. there was all the social unrest that was really troubling to me as well. And so I think we really tried to tra translate all of those aspects into the music. Mm -hmm. and I think also we were thinking just on a meta level, like what kind of direction that we would want to go with this record? Mm -hmm. Because I think our first full length called Moonbearer, that was more on the heavier side, but it was still, I would say, like post hardcore. Mm -hmm. Our next album, which was the first one with Solid State Records, um, it's called I'll Always Be the Same. That one was more like ethereal and mm -hmm. melancholic. Um, and to me, like, I really wanted to go in the complete opposite direction with this album. And yeah. something gritty and and dark and yeah. textured, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, to me, uh, this record on a meta level, we really wanted to try and funnel all of these emotions and everything that was going on at the time into mm -hmm. this grittier, more experimental framework. Um, and I think one of the biggest things is just I, w I don't ever want to do the same record twice. I want to keep yeah. getting more um, challenging. I want to I want to challenge our listeners and have our listeners uh, not know what to expect with the next thing we're going to do. That's awesome. I love that a lot. Uh, so what band or artist influence do you think you hear the most on this album? Yeah, so there's a few that personally, when I was writing, um, really inspired the band, um, a band called Sumac, um, one of my favorite bands. Um, another band called Oransi Pazuzu, um, super hypnotic, um, really layered and building uh, song structures. Mm -hmm. um, and a band called Cult Leader was another big one, and Gaza as well, um, which is like kind of split from the same band. Um, I'd say those are the big three that really in inspired the sound on this record. That's right. fair. Uh, so this one should be super, super fast. Off the top of your head, I want you to describe this album for new listeners in three words. This is great. Okay. Uh, gritty, um, ethereal, uh, dark. I don't know. That Those describes perfect. it perfectly. <laughs> yeah, honestly, that's amazing. Like when I was listening to the album, I was like, "Wow, this is uh, this is different than what I typically listen to," but uh, right. that that's not in a bad way. Um, yeah. I just I just don't typically listen to that hard of metal, so I was like, "Okay, this is something perfect. I can get behind, though." Yeah, I'm I'm happy to uh, like do something that people maybe weren't expecting. You know? Yeah. Uh, because I think this record still does have a lot of the elements that our older stuff does have. And I, I'm, I'm, I think personally that this record is by far our most um, diverse record. I think it's our most um, dense record. And I think it's also our probably most accessible in a way. Um, I think our songs, we really like streamline the sound. And I think people who are fans of our previous material will find lots of things to uh, connect to on this album as well through all of the, the grittiness and texture and um, maybe darker parts there. I really made it a point to uh, have these like shimmers of light come through, you know? Yeah. So I, I really think um, when people hear this record, there'll be people who are fans of our previous material will, will find things to like as well. Mm -hmm. all right. Definitely. Uh, so is there a certain feeling you want listeners to have while going through the track? or the album, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I think when someone listens to our album, I think uh, what I what I would hope is that it would be a journey. And um, something that I've tried to do on every one of our records is try and really plan, really deliberately 
how the flow of the songs feels when you're listening through. So um, we, when I'm writing the record, um, sometimes I'll write consecutively. So I will finish song one, then song two, then song three. Um, but then after the record is completed, we will go back and try and rearrange the songs to fit the flow that we want. We really want this record to be a journey. Mm. We want it to feel like um, you start off and there's this overarching arc to the, to the music that the listener is experiencing. And we hope by the end of the album that you'll feel like it was like a roller coaster or something, you know? Mm. Um, going back to your question about um, the album art. Mm -hmm. um, so Ken Pectomir did the album art to this record and he did the album art to uh, Moonbearer. And I think concept, like this album is conceptually related to Moonbearer in a way. Oh, okay. Yeah, so there are themes that the listener may uh, pick up that are from Moonbearer. I really mm -hmm. try to add these like little motifs. Something I'm really trying to do is um, create something where listeners can can listen multiple times and notice different elements in the music each time. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm really hoping that when people listen to Pale Home, they'll get these like echoes of Moonbearer. Yeah. In terms of like how the song structure and the album structure works. Um, and I, I really wanted the, I thought it was a perfect opportunity to ask Ken Pectomir to do the album artwork for this because this is such like an homage to our previous material. Yeah. Way, yeah. Um, especially with the last song in this album, I'm, I'm excited for people to hear that one because um, I really like the idea of having the last song on our record be this like long epic, you know? Uh, yeah. To me, like, I like the idea of having this long epic as the last song and then having the very end of the record be this like summation of the entire thing. Mm -hmm. you know? So, uh, I hope when people listen to this album, they um, kind of hear references to older material as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. When I when I was listening through the album and I saw the nine minute track, I figured <laughs> that was very daunting because like my favorite band's Corn and they do the same thing with like the very long track at the end. And I've never listened to those tracks. I can never get <laughs> oh that God. far. Wow. So, um, but it was like an experience in and of itself just listening to that final song. So I think that that was very cool. <laughs> Up on my favorite band when I was growing up. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I can't believe it. You got Shane to listen to a nine minute track. <laughs> like sometimes he can't even listen to like a five minute track. He's like, well, this is way too this long. This is way too fucking long. So for that me. <laughs> that is that's like an award right there. That's amazing. I've never heard that. I've never heard. Oh my god. I'm I'm shocked. Anyways, <laughs> where do you see the band in the next five years? That's a great question. I think um I I think I don't know. And I, to me, that's one of the most exciting things. I mm -hmm. see the bands continuing indefinitely because um, I think we have a really healthy relationship dynamic within the band where we can just keep producing music forever. Mm -hmm. but, um, there is like a bit of a distance between some of the members in the band. So mm -hmm. most of the band is from Philly, but we have some members in Brooklyn and they mm -hmm. drive they drive to Philly to practice. <laughs> wow, that's, it's a trip. Yeah, that's a trek. Whew. But I mean, like, we're we're all super committed to the band, and mm -hmm. I don't see us going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, I see us continuing to write music in, indefinitely into the future. I know I will be. And yeah. Like this band is like my baby, and I would, I would do this forever. So, hoping to continue this for the next five years and keep releasing records and touring all right definitely that's uh, amazing so for the last couple of questions we're actually shift away from music and go straight to death row boom so <laughs> if you're on death row what would your last meal be with a drink that's cool Ooh, okay um my last meal on death row would be um some kind of burrito it would be um chipotle or it would be uh Panchero, there'll be like a tofu uh, mm -hmm. burrito with rice and black beans and cheese, vegan cheese if, if possible. Mm -hmm. and, um, for a drink, it would be 
a glass of whiskey. All right. <laughs> Solid. All right. If you could live in one fictional world for a week, where would you live? Ooh. Um, well, I just finished rewatching The Lord of the Rings. And mm-hmm. um, I think Middle Earth would be pretty amazing. I would mm-hmm. love to live in the Shire. Um, to me, like a lot of people really like the two towers uh, in terms of like the trilogy. I think the first one is my favorite. Mm-hmm. I really love like Hobbits and the Shire. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Uh, so I have the honor of asking the last question and every single person you've spoken to have said that it is the most important question what's your favorite color so my favorite color is gray and I Mm -hmm. like gray because um, you can interpret it in so many different ways you know I I love things that are um, ambiguous I love things that um, people can really make up their minds about and I think Mm -hmm. The color gray, um, it really encompasses like light and dark, and people can really interpret the color gray in a lot of different ways. You know, yeah. Um, I like how it's kind of like um, emotion neutral in a way, where like you know, color blue kind of has the connotation of sadness, and the color mm-hmm. red anger, and like gray just has this like it's like mist or something. I don't know. Yeah. I really like gray is my favorite color. All right. That's a Solid. really good answer. Yeah. yeah. We don't get gray enough. <laughs> no, we don't. It's a very good color. <laughs> um, so as I said, that's all the questions we have to say. Is there anything that you would like to plug? Um, yeah, we have a record coming out on March 26th. I hope I'm getting the date right. I think that's mm-hmm. right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, it's called Pale Home, and we are super excited for everyone to hear it. Um, it's, it's a banger. So it. true. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, thank you for sitting out with us. It's been Brandon uh, from Drown God and uh, We're the Good Noise Podcast. Yeah.